Hi, I'm John from Our Home Scratch, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to rip out those small baseboards and replace them with big ones. Okay, let's start this baseboard installation by removing the, the old stuff. First, I'm going to pry away the quarter end molding with a crowbar. I'm going to do that gently because I want to reuse this stuff. I don't want to go buy it. Um, I'm switching from the short baseboards to the tall baseboards because I think they look better. It'll give the house a, a I guess, a grander appearance. It'll look, it'll look nicer. I'm going to start uh, removing the baseboard by taking a box cutter and scoring along the painter's caulk joint that keeps the, uh, the baseboard molding sealed to the wall. If you don't score it, remove it, when you try to pry off that baseboard boarding, you're, you're liable to tear the drywall paper. So anywhere there's caulk, we're going to score. Inside corners, against the other molding there, got to do this first, or else. Okay, once that's all scored, I'm going to take my crowbar, and I'm going to tap it between the molding and the wall. Careful not to puncture the wall. Okay, um, if I'm going to a taller molding here, so if I do ding the wall up, uh, it'll probably be hidden by the taller molding. But again, I want to work this crowbar along the length of the molding and, and just gradually and gently pull this away. And I'm going to do this in every place I have molding. All right, so once that's out of the way, be careful with those nails. And I'm going to just get that out of there. All right, now to prep the wall, I'm going to take another box cutter, this time a straight edge one. And or a flat edge, and I'm going to scrape off any ex remaining caulk on the wall, any glue on the wall, all the nails that were on the other molding. If they're still sticking out of the wall, they need to be tapped in. This wall needs to be flat and, and ready for the next new piece of molding. Okay, this is why I wanted to make this video. Let me show you how I install molding. I'm going to square off the left side, and I'm going to use the molding itself and a pencil to mark the length. I'm not going to use a tape measure for this job at all. It makes this process so much faster and much more accurate. Okay, so a little bit of construction adhesive. Again, both sides are squared off at the miter saw here. And I'm going to show you how this joint works. If you're thinking, well, wouldn't you use a miter joint for that inside corner? You could, but this way will be faster and it will look better, I promise. Let me show you how that works. First things first, the new piece of molding goes in. A little bit of construction adhesive. I'm going to use a finished nailer here. It's longer nails. You can use a brad nailer if you want. Uh, this allows me to finish nailing with longer nails, uh, allows that molding to be pulled against the wall if it's got any movement on it. Alright, now for that inside corner, I'm going to start by making a 45 degree uh, miter cut, okay? Um, and we're going to cope it, alright? So I'm going to take it over to the table, I'm going to clamp it down, and I'm going to take out my coping saw. This is a fairly inexpensive handheld saw you can get at your local hardware store for around 10 bucks, I think. And I'm going to cut an opposite 45 degrees. So he's making a little triangle there. I'm going to cut along the paint line of this molding. And I'm basically, you know, cutting in reverse 45 here. I'm going to leave a profile on this molding that will match that other molding that's already installed. So you just cut along the, the prime uh, molding there, right on the paint line. And uh, it's pretty simple to do. It's not hard. You're watching me do this in real time. I'm going to also cut off the sharp tip from the other side and then just, again, follow along the paint line. This little handheld coping saw, uh, it has a small blade. You can make small, uh, subtle curves there with it pretty simply. It's not hard to use. All right. Uh, you can see it's nice and carved out. It looks like it already has the shape from this angle of that molding. So I'm just going to make some more undercuts there. And now uh, I, I left it long. I'm going to push it into the corner. And you can see how tight that joint looks. Not bad. I mean, it'll give it some painter's cock, but that's a tighter joint than a miter. If that wall's off, it's not 90 degrees exactly, then a, a miter joint at 45 degrees isn't going to work. It's going to look open or closed. Now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to mark where that wall meets the back of that molding. And now I know where to cut that next piece of molding at the miter saw. I didn't have to use a, a, a measuring tape again. So I'm going to get ahead of myself here and put the next piece down there too. I cut 45 on the left side. I'm going to use a pencil again. So now I can go to the miter saw and cut these next two pieces out in one visit to the miter saw. And I'm rolling. So now I got my glue here. And the beauty of this is, okay, suppose you cut this piece too long. Okay, no big deal. Take it back to the miter saw and shave off a little from the miter end. Don't touch the coping end. You don't need to touch the coping end unless you cut this board too short and you need to do the whole thing over. But that's it. That's how you do inside and outside joints with baseboard without using a tape measure, using coke joints, and using the board itself for measurements. 
just a little bit of construction adhesive, some brad nails or finished nails, depending upon the wall. And once that glue sets up, good to go, and you can putty it and uh, caulk it. All right, that didn't look too hard, right? Pretty straightforward. So uh, if you like this video, do me a favor and like the video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting that box there. In our next video, I'm going to show you how to install trim on angled walls so you can, there's an easier way to do all that. So I'll see you next time.